Um, first, I'm just going to start by saying that um, we are on this land of Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people, um, land of peace and friendship based on their treaties. And I just want to pay homage to our African ancestors um, for the struggles that they endured for us so that we may be able to continue on um, this fight for liberty and justice and freedom. And it's because of the foundation that they laid is the reason why I'm here today. So I'm gonna get right to my presentation, um, designed for some, benefits for all, an Afrocentric approach to math and literacy. When roots are deep, there's no need to fear the wind. And so it's important to understand how deep one's culture is. If individuals have an understanding of the roots, they will be able to feel comfortable in their understanding and of their identity. And so this sets the stage in terms of how deep the roots are and what we need to begin to think about in terms of children and how children learn. So what does it look like? Well, there is this correlation between math and literacy. So children in African ancestry, black children, they continue to question their identity and a place within math and literacy. And so here we ask the questions, why do I need this? Um, why do we need to study or learn math or English? And I call it literacy here. Especially as students feel that they're unrepresented um, or misrepresented uh, and they feel that school was not designed for them. So we have to begin to look at these correlations that exist between math and literacy and begin to develop some positive reflections of who the students were teaching. So I'm advocating today that the design in mind for some will benefit all. Centering students in their history makes it matter and helps them to address their opportunity and those achievement gaps that we talk about. That integration of history and culture, which is very critical. Let's use math as a tool just to develop those analytical, the problem solving um, skills that students need to help predict research. But it's beyond that. We have to create that mentality, that safe space to be. So we have to look a little bit on, actually, I want to go back a minute. Just when we talk about this in terms of what does it look like, um, that correlation, I should speak just a little bit between math and literacy. Sometimes these words may have multiple meanings. And um, sometimes people use home language, their community language to explain. Any number means all numbers in math context. So that language may differ from place to place. When we talk about that pause reflection, we speak about equity and how do we construct multiple language to assist our students. And then again, we look at understanding those issues of systemic um, racism and racism as well. And then the integration of history and culture, which is important to um, children's math and literacy. And then again, looking at that positive reflection. When I say safe space to be, I'm talking about rather than look at obstacles, let's shift our language and provide resources so that students feel um, that they have a space in math and literacy. So when we define equity, it says, although equity means, and, and most of us do know this in terms of fairness and justice, I put the word blurred. Um, it's sometimes blurred with sameness. For as example, equality in mathematics um, in an educational setting might mean that all students are given the same access to powerful mathematics, the same quality of teachers, the same curriculum materials, the same forms of teaching, and the same supports for learning. Um, this would be actually amazing if education took place within a universal and a social, political, economic, all those isms that we do, we sometimes forget that exists. This does not happen though, this is not the case. Therefore, we need to address these past injustices and count for the home and community, resources and student identities. So that's what I'm advocating for today, that we need to look at that whole word called same um, in terms of fairness. And so this is why design for some will benefit all, because we keep in mind that the difference between equality and equity, equity is not an abstract goal. 
It is a process. So what we have to do in terms of the process, we need to predict some of those students in terms of their achievement, how they participate based on their language, based on their race, based on their ethnicities. These beliefs, because their language may not be the same as others. And students do not, sometimes second, students do not relate to the same power and the role they may play in society. So there's a power relationships that exist, um, or power dynamics, and we cannot ignore those dynamics. So how do we draw on those conclusions? Well, we need to start looking at how is representation of all sides. So the integration of culture and lived experiences, we need to have a balanced approach to history. We need to represent our children so that they understand we came from and how we got here and how we interact and construct what takes place within the society. Students come to school with the understanding of who they are, sometimes rooted in their culture, if they come from strong families who understand the culture and are able to give them that information, those tools, but they do come from an understanding of where they live and what they have and what they bring with them. So we have to appreciate the student's culture. We need to appreciate their frameworks and understand that math happens in their lives. And when you go to the Black Learners Advisory Committee report or the reality check, it gives you recommendations of some of the things that teach, students have been saying, family's been saying, community's been saying, parents have been saying about how their children learn and about the misrepresentation that exists within society. What are those situations that are happening within the world? They actually form um, how students predict and how they analyze information. What resources do students need to understand and communicate their understanding of these words um, so that they can participate in these conversation? In Lisa Delpit's book, Multiplications is for White People, she says, I'm raising the expectation for other people's children. She says, do not let literacy be harmful to other children, especially if children are struggling to read or write. She said, find those connections and their interests. In some classrooms, students use arts as a basis for reading and writing. Other teachers use music to inspire creative writing. Some teachers have students analyze and discuss text, allow students to defend their choice. Remember, the supports that a child receives is very critical. So working together to make that change, representing all those sides. So if that's the case, we have to look at what is taught and what is not taught. And so what is not taught, taught is hopelessness, liability of the race. Well, sorry, that's what is taught, is hopelessness, liability of the race. We talk about the slave mentality, systemic issues, fear, ignorance, lack of culture and identity. What is not taught should be the importance of community and family. That's socioeconomic political. I spoke about that earlier in terms of the power dynamics and those power relationships, those accomplishments and achievements, those narratives from other perspectives that balance support and approach the truth of our history and a purpose. All of those Nagusa Sabbath principles we talk about the prior knowledge and experience. And then of course, inclusions. Malcolm X said, students were not told that ancient Africans of the interior knew sufficient signs to conquer poisons for arrowheads, to mix durable colors for paintings, to extract metals from nature and refine them for development in industrial arts. Teachers need to know that the Underground Railroad, those patterns that were used to develop ways where students could actually, or ancestors at that particular time, it was a way that they communicated. So they developed those quilts and they, those seamstress put those quilts together to formulate language, a message, communicate to those who are slave to become enslaved. And that's the way sometimes that we speak as well in terms of messages and how do we communicate. And so refining some of those development and information can create that. Teachers need also to help students see themselves 
And this comes from the Afrocentric principle as doers and not just consumers or spectators, but they are the ones who actually are the creators. Help them translate these expressions that happen in mathematical terminologies, in terms of equations and problem solving, and then recognize that patterns. And this is important in terms of how allowing students to learn as well as seeing myself within the learning. So math and literacy and culture. If we looked at that in terms of the transformation of how do we transform this language, this knowledge of classroom knowledge, math and literacy, how do we make sure that the environment matters? How do we pay attention to how it's constructed? And we know that sometimes girls and guys learn differently, but how do we construct that information so that we pay attention so those who are abstract, um, abstract and that concrete information. That traditional and non-traditional way of teaching, how do we engage the students so they begin to realize themselves? And how do our values about what we consider to be mathematical or mathematics influencing the curriculum develops our children? Like, how do we question that? in terms of making sure that that balance that we need in both literacy and mathematics is going to be beneficial to all children. Confidence plays a role. And this year, we had the opportunity through the Afrocentric cohort to graduate 21 students. And one of the key things they kept saying to us was that teachers believed in them. They saw them. They were able to raise their confidence they felt that they were able to learn and that they learned about themselves. And that becomes a part of the trust factor as well. And then they also say it's a relationship in terms of knowledge, those background, how important it is to be creating uh, and also delivering the way math and literacy is produced. So within that, looking at benefits for all, designed for some, is that from an Afrocentric point of view, we have to balance approach to history. Children need to understand where we came from and how we can make this world a better place. And students come to school with the understanding of who they are and rooted in their culture. And it be from extended family, from participation, maybe reading books from aunties and uncles. All these individuals play a key role in terms of how students see themselves. Appreciation of their students' culture, those culture frames we talked about earlier, and understanding that math happens in their lives every day. And the greatest thing too is to expose them. Expose black students to the higher level courses. This could impact their motivation and willingness to go on to higher level courses. So examine their mathematical experience within the classroom. Look at those counter narratives so that the narratives that we create already have not been constructed. Let's look at other narratives which have not been constructed. The claims that are made are built on our identity and the message that the world around us portrays us as opposed to only some. Examples of working in the history classes is important for those discussions that you may have in terms of math and critical to the Black and African Nova Scotian experience, where we connect the math and the literacy. And we go beyond just what happens in the classroom. We always should recognize their lived experiences, but their space and their location. One of the uh, article that I read talks about boundaries, and it's from Nasir and Cobb, and it says that there are three types of boundaries. Um, those who belong and who do not belong, called perceived position, location, and distribution of power. Then it talks about meaning, uh, position or relational, relational identity. So you have boundaries, perceived position, and then you have meaning. Students need the opportunity to develop their own identity rather than one of underachievers or at risk. And these constructions show up, like mentioned before, in various aspects of society. So if we are able to value their abilities, then we should be able to scaffold their materials and break it down. And we do this within English, 
We get them to um, do a draft and redrafts. We get them to work on their intro and their conclusion. It's the same thing with mathematics. It's making sure that always that you're looking at how do you formulate and take what they know to bring it into something that they may need to be able to problem solve and analyze. They do that in all forms of classes or subjects that they have. Again, going to the late Dr. Asa Hillier, he states that excellent goals when dealing with all students. He said to teach understanding rather than merely to teach operations, to teach mathematical language for the purpose of communicating, to teach students that math is not all a fixed body of knowledge, but that it is an experiential ex enterprise. So try a variety of strategies and to understand that mathematics is a reflection of life and that life is mathematical and to give students a sense of hope that they can become superior performers. So where does this leave us? If we look at beyond numbers and identity, it talks about this and I just went through some of it. Um, examining the class through an Afrocentric or equity lens, and we talked about equity and equality, which may not be the same, but Afrocentric in terms of centering the students and their knowledge. Ways of being and knowing so that they can construct their ways, what they know, and how do they construct their understanding, the social, the economic, political, looking at what's happening in the world today. Working with history into the classes, so that exposure. Relating it to their lived experiences, creating that sense of belonging. So it's beyond the numbers, which I say, which equal identity. And that's where you see that sense of confidence. And then we try to eliminate some of those barriers. So where does power, oppression, and equity show up? And sometimes we always say, let's follow the steps. But for me, it's more than steps. We try like to, not to make it so simplistic. Yes, there's some process that you have to follow, but you have to understand that within the language and the math that we're talking about from an Afrocentric approach in terms of um, design for some benefits for all, that we have to make sure power, that we do not discount students' potential, that we see that they're black students. We see them, we recognize them, we understand them, and we allow them to be who they are. We question the work. So it's always ongoing in terms of what we do. It. Did you do this? Are you sure you understand? So this is what we do to our children. We always question them and say, are you sure you understand? And there's always these hidden messages sometimes. We sometimes place doubt um, and then we change the conversation. So when you do that, where when power shows up, you place doubt in the child and the child is saying, well, maybe I really don't understand it. Then they forget. And sometimes they don't take those risks. We have to help teachers change their practices because that's where power shows up as well. And review policies that impede development for children. Where does oppression show up? Well, you gotta get rid of that deficit thinking. It does not mean that blacks are less prepared, but let's get rid of that. Give children a chance, black children a chance. We need to self-reflect on how to connect with students who are left behind, who are not answering questions, who are feeling uncomfortable. We need to self-reflect and maybe change how we present material. We need to help others be accountable for their actions. So not always children, yes, children do need, but also those who are giving the instructions. And then acknowledge as teachers that we do have biases. We have white privilege and we also have um, implicit bias and um, that shows up as well. Equity, well, give students hope, you know, resources and support. So that way that even though others may be doing this, let's look at the children who are not and find out why, what do they need? See them, and I said that in the beginning for power, see black students, and equity, see them. Put students and their literacy first, and allow them so they can be heard and try to understand their narratives. 
Remember we talked about those counter narratives. Now let's talk about their narratives as well. So if we look at awareness and analysis and action, and I do speak about teachers because it's really important. They are critical in this world, in this, I guess this presentation, but also in this world of how we change what happens. And so teachers matter in how we change the discourse. And so I want teachers to look at the culture capital and the assets that black students bring to the classroom. I want them to understand that interaction is critical. Build those relationships and a sense of trust so students feel that they're, it's okay for them to speak to you and tell you things. And then that way you get to know who they are. Embrace the student wherever they come from and their language. Recognize their language in terms of home language, community language, whatever language that they have, try to understand it. Don't cut them off and saying they can't read and write. Help them so they can develop those skills. And search resources that are reflective of them. Go beyond what you were told or giving. And sometimes we know that we're not always given all the tools, but help our students to go beyond what they may not have. And recognize the unique learning styles of our students. So that's going back to understanding how they learn. And reflect who gets involved in the conversation, who is answering, who's talking, who's communicating. Be in tune with what's happening within your classroom. Hold them, each other, yourself, to higher expectations. Let's hold ourselves to those expectations. Let's raise those bars. Let's connect to the students' lives. Let's make meaningful connections so students can see how it does relate. How do we disrupt those perceptions? Well, sometimes we have to, again, recognize that we do have some biases. So we disrupt the perception of who can and who cannot do math, who cannot do English or struggle with literacy. Students, as well as teachers, will develop, develop their identity as well. And students will develop their identity as, as long as that we recognize they do have culture knowledge, they have prior information. And that hopefully will inform your practices shape how we approach the work that we do. So when students can see themselves in curriculum and see diversity in curriculum, they respond better. And here is just saying that students, they engage and they have conversation based on how they feel and how they feel they're represented within the classroom. And if they feel that we are actually trying to engage with them and motivate them, encourage them. Students will see that this person sees me. They see me as a black student, but they see that I have potential and that I'm luminous in terms of who I am and what I can do. So how do we protect children? And I know that there's um, the steps here. And I think that we can protect, protect children and it says, <clears throat> creative ways. Remember, I spoke earlier about Lisa Delpit and I talked about art and um, how we inspire through music, but also how we can inspire through mathematics, English, but ways to allow children to feel part of what we're doing. So it was no sense of doing a lesson or having a test and students don't do well and then saying it's their fault. Well, you know, Reflect on terms of what happened, in terms of what we could have did differently. And maybe there's a creative way to allow children to feel part of that process. How do we connect to the community? Maybe we might need to bring in some of the elders or Zoom them in since we're on Zoom platforms, not knowing what COVID's gonna be um, come September. But how do we connect um, to those prior knowledge? and making sure that we allow students to have an opportunity to talk about the prior knowledge. And that sometimes we just gotta step back, um, whatever class it may be, and just say that what's happening in our life, what's happening in the moment today? Because students may not want to talk about math, they may not want to talk about English or social studies or science. They might wanna talk about what's happening in the world. I mean, they might need time to share how they're hurting and how they're feeling in that time and space. So those conversations that we have, they've gotta be authentic. They've got to be truthful. 
We need to cultivate those relationships, and that's so important. Students know when you're when you're authentic. Students know when you're genuine. Students know when they you care about them. So speak, speak to the children. We need to make sure that we have those appropriate materials for black children so that they see themselves as all the things we want them to be, those mathematicians, those um, historians, those computer scientists, those writers. How they are used is important in terms of those materials and how we see children and how we encourage them. We've got to expose our children to higher levels of everything and expose them to what's, and what's taking place in terms of different jobs, um, and different opportunities. And this could impact their motivation and their willingness to go on. And we may actually get a few more teachers, which would be great because for us, representation doesn't matter in terms of making sure we get more teachers into the, to the system. So I'm gonna go quickly to my next slide about what's next. These choices, these options, and these questions. <clears throat> so that I have a few more times to maybe there'll be some questions. Um, so what's next? So we gotta serve better. We gotta plan better. We gotta be aware of how we deliver our lessons and how different cultures practice and learn and conceive or understand um, math and literacy. It is our duty as teachers to search out resources that speak to black learners and others who are left out. We need to be thoughtful and practical and willing to go beyond what you were told or given. Consider students' needs and not what we think they need. So sometimes we just gotta find out. Quick little question, what, what do you need? Do you need me to slow down? Do you need me to review this again? Do you need me to chunk this up for you? Sometimes we just need to do that, being more practical in how we deliver. We need to recognize that some of our black learners are expressive. And for myself, I use my hands, gestures to get a point across. And students do that too as well. Sometimes they get a little bit louder because they want to express how they're feeling, especially if they feel they're not being heard. Just recognize that as a way of how they learn and how they want you to understand how they're feeling at that moment. Don't see it for anything else. Work is bigger than us. And what I mean that students need to feel that they can thrive. We need to see potential possibilities for our children. We have to examine the data so that we can keep, continue to move that pendulum back and forth and that we get students to where they could go. We gotta be creative in terms of our actions, creating actions to you know, impact students who are ignored, <clears throat> who are left out, and not putting labels on them, at risk, underachievers. So let's examine those labels. Encourage students to feel motivated, inspired to learn. Hold all students to high standards by providing positive reinforcement and support regular check-ins and sometimes we make mistakes and we you know say things to students say oh you know you probably didn't understand that let's check ourselves in terms of what we say let's try to give them some positive reinforcement because that may be the only place where they may receive it be it in the classroom or in school so positive messages they go, go a long way keep it up great work you did today i like how you contributed what does the word successful mean? So for some students, it may mean for black students, you know, bar or chart or a mark or so, require their input. Success may mean different things for different individuals. So lists require their input a little bit more. And reflect on who gets involved in the conversation, discussions, the explanation, who's raising their hands, who's not. Let's try to engage them a little bit more. Teachers, we are trained to develop those minds and develop people. It is about care and how we connect and how we become creative and how we deliver these messages. So our final destinations could be options, could be choices, could be questions, but our goal is to serve better in the future. 
The work we do can help prepare the future generation and benefit our communities, all communities. So challenge our students, all students. If we truly value black students, we need to know who they are. We need to know that their identity matters. It's beyond numbers, it's identity. How they learn and develop authentic relationships. And that's me. And I'm stopping now because I know my time is um, done.